to our guest in the studio this week, as promised, Thijs Diederichs uh, from a an actual tech startup, I think. Uh, yeah, sort of a startup. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, okay. Well, I'm going to um, uh, ask you just uh, the six and 60 to get us started. This is just get to know you questions. Uh, 60 seconds, and we'll try to get to all six questions. The first answer is exactly right. Ready to go? Yes, okay. definitely. Uh, do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I do. Okay. Brother and a sister. A brother and a sister. Nice. Uh, are you middle or? Uh... I'm the I'm I'm the youngest. The youngest. Oh, okay. Uh, what'd you have for breakfast this morning? A croissant. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> Some really bad coffee. <laughs> uh, what was the poster on your wall when you were growing up? Oh my God, that was uh, I had a, a great poster of of Mars. Oh really? Yeah. Oh good. Or oh. the moon. I don't, I don't know. That's. Oh, yeah. Maybe a, a moon of Mars. The moon of Mars, huh? Okay. Whatever. <laughs> what book are you reading right now? Um, yeah, it's a Spanish writer. It's uh, the, um, what's the name again? Uh, in English, it's uh, the, the, the Queen on, on Bare Feet. Okay. Oh, I have to read that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It's about, um, well, it's, plays, it's in the uh, 18th century. Oh, really? About flamingo and about the, the okay. about gypsies. Oh, good, good. Well, uh, okay. Uh, who inspired you as a kid? As a kid? Well, I guess that's, well, that would well be a football player, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Which one? Uh, well, Graf and Wim, Graf. Wim, Wim Surbier. Oh, Wim Surbier. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you. And one nice thing you can say about the EU. Uh, well, it's home. There we go. <laughs> well, thank you. Now you're uh, coming from, you know, uh, Taylor World. I know uh, is an institution in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and now you're starting up uh, Tring. Uh, so tell us a little bit about, you know, how did you uh, get started? Well, yeah, Tring is actually a spin-off from from Taylor World. Yeah, uh, Taylor World. Well, you know, the uh, telecom uh, company in, in Amsterdam since more than thirty years, I think. Yeah. Um, so, but for with Tring, we uh, we we're for the SME market, yeah, the small medium enterprises. Yep. And we are a, a, a telecom internet service provider. Yep. Um, so which is you know a, a pretty full field already. I think you know. I mean, telecom internet service provider. Uh, yeah, the big ones are. No big or no. Well, actually, it's not because the the the, the big companies like the the KPNs and, yeah. the, and the UPCs they yeah. can't actually um, uh, deliver the services to the SME market. Right. They're very very active in the uh, the, the the domestic market. Yeah. Uh, but not in the in the in the in the B two B market. I see. Okay. So so what is the hole in the market for Tring and uh, yeah? What do you well, well, since we have net, well, that's that goes with the, the story of Europe as well. Since we have net n neutrality in, in in Europe, yeah, uh, people like like Tring, we can uh, deliver um, services to the SME market. Yeah, we you don't need your own network anymore right. because we have the beautiful thi be beautiful thing called internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 yeah, net neutrality is we think guaranteed that. Uh, well, yeah, it's guaranteed. Uh, I guess I don't know about a year ago it was guaranteed in Europe. Yeah, I, I think it's still an issue in in, in the states. Yeah, it's still yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. A, a debate that is shouldn't be going on but still is going yeah. on. Yeah, still going on. So no, um, <clears throat> so the, the the cloud market, which of course is very important, that's quite a new market. Yeah, and uh, there are not there are a lot of cloud services. Yeah. Um, but there are not really a lot of. I mean, there will be a lot more. I mean, if we're just really on the beginning of cloud services. Okay. Uh, I, I sort of compare the market now of cloud and void market yeah. as the market of uh, mobile phones in the nineties. Yeah. And this is sort of this. Way it feels like oh, people. Are, this is an, an awareness that's growing. Yeah. And uh, in fact, well, um, we were talking to some people about. Uh, Starting up your own company, working for you know, trying to service the SME markets, uh, trying to use the internet, trying to use the resources that we that we have. What is it like trying to do? Yeah, basically a tech startup in Europe right now. Uh, let's see what some other people had to say. Right. Now, what are some key ingredients for a tech startup right now? You really need a good team. Yeah, something to trust on, to share your values, what you do and why you do it, and yes, work on it hard. Yeah, I think I really think it's the team. What are the key ingredients for a successful startup in Europe right now? Okay, it should be um, a European project, which means that 
the major European cities are uh, participating. Second, we don't need this uh, European bu bureaucracy. We have to fill in papers, which are amazing. It needs you, you if you fill in those uh, papers, you need at least um, two persons, yeah. one month. And that's insane. Where is the next Silicon Valley going to be in 10 years? Russia or Spain? Spain. Yeah, I think they're well educated. Um, and the unemployment there is, is, is kind of forcing a lot of uh, creativity. Uh, Russia is kind of a liability, I th I'd say. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Uh, and uh, what are the key ingredients of a startup in Europe right now? Um, I think uh, an intense desire to fight through the red tape, mm -hmm. uh, the willingness to pay a significant amount of taxes, uh, and of course a good idea. That's in third place. <laughs> All right, let's turn that around. Yeah. Well, no, that's what we seem to be hearing is that red tape and taxes are indeed uh, sometimes the most important hurdles that you have to face even before you can bring your idea to the table. Yeah, because I think that, you know, if you're I mean, everybody is aware of red tape and, and, and taxes, so it might even, you know, um, prevent ideas from even, you know, coming to you. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that uh, European leaders can be doing uh, to make life easier for startups, entrepreneurs, innovators? Yeah, I think when it comes to policy, when opening up bi businesses, there's too much, there are too many rules. Too I, red tape. I started my startup too, and it was, it was, it was really difficult because of the regulation, etc. I think that we should really allow the people that, that want to invest, that want to start up a business, give them the freedom, and also, and also invest in them, help them instead of pulling them down. I think that would be a great shift, which will really help the economy too. Okay. Uh, what about the, the startups, the uh, uh, tech companies? Uh, is there more Europe can do maybe you know, to help the innovators and entrepreneurs? At the end, but at this time there are more and bigger important questions before that one. Yeah. But and at the end, yeah. when Europe is coming to the to its total uh, movement, yeah. that's the question, but not, not now. Okay. Where will the next Silicon Valley be, in Russia or Spain? I really hope in uh, Spain. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Back to uh, your uh, business, which is not so much, you know, uh, 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 I don't know, a hardware, uh, but more the uh, services, services uh, yeah. serving. Uh, but um, we talked about red tape a lot. Um, mm -hmm. How's it going with you? I mean, you, you, we called you a startup earlier. You said that's not really accurate. Um, how would you describe yourself in that? Well, I mean, a startup, startup. We're already there for, you know, over a year. So yeah. in that sense, I'm not really a startup. Yeah. But I'm a startup that, and actually, uh, we just finished a crowdfunding project. Okay. Um, so we needed my money, and the, the funny thing, all those people, yeah, you know, they, they they said quite a few things about right. crea creativity, and the red tape. Yeah. Um, but money. Raising you know, money. Raising money. <laughs> you know, I think that's very, very important. Right. And uh, I think that's uh, the, uh, a lot easier in the states than yeah. it is in Europe. Okay. And uh, so that we should change. Uh, I suppose in the States you also have, uh, you can go from a city to a, a you know, interstate, uh, you know, national basis pretty quickly. Uh, how are you looking at going from one market to uh, expanding, you know? Uh, yeah, what's, what's your vision? In, in my own field, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, expanding, well, it sounds really nice business-wise. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, the, the new economy is more like, you know, it's, um, of course you have great projects like Google and Spotify and, you know, they apply for everyone. Mm -hmm. But the main businesses are for, you know, it's for the, for the, uh, for is local businesses. Yeah, yeah. I, I really believe more in a local business okay. than in a, in a, in a, in a you know, if everyone dreams of, you know, of course, a big being a big Google. Right. Yeah. Uh, but you can be really big and really, you know, run a nice business and mm. have a nice life. Yeah. Uh, running a business uh, based, a local based business. Well, that, that, that's great. Actually. I'm, I mean, we went, I went crowdfunding. Yeah. And the first thing, uh, the, the guy from the crowdfunding company asked, what do you want? Okay. Yeah. And uh, well, my idea was, you know, to have Tring for the, mainly for the Amsterdam, for the Randstad market. Yeah. I, I don't need to be everywhere in Holland. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, well, that's when the most of the small, medium enterprises, uh, I guess that's... As well, as well. Yeah. 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 You don't need to be really big. You know? 
uh, it's the, in, the, in the new market, it's more like uh, trust people, not brands. Yeah. yeah, so yeah that's, exactly. And that's what we like to, you know, to. Right. Uh, let's talk. Anyway, yeah, we we did the crowdfunding, and um, we're talking about crowdfunding. Yes. That, that is really, really interesting because, the, I mean, the banks, they, they will have a definite, a uh, very different role yeah. in the coming years. Yeah. Um, crowdfunding, you know, goes, you know, the. Go sky high. That, okay. that will be will be the next few years. You're right. Uh, um, crowdfunding be, will be very important. And Sharing economy as well. And for I mean, raising uh, money for 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 startups, that will be the main thing. I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, so, um, so we in Europe we can really learn from crowdfunding. Right. And uh, we need to raise money a lot a lot of money. Yeah. It's easier to raise it f with. I don't know a few thousand people. Yeah, than yeah. from one very uh, um, rich guy in the states. Uh, thanks very much, Thijs Diederiks. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Definitely. All right. Good. Good. <laughs>